Ryobi's original self-propelled cross-cut lawnmower signaled a whole new level of performance for the Home Depot brand. Now they've got an all-wheel drive version and they did more than just update the drive system and we're going to tell you everything you need to know. This is the original self-propelled cross-cut mower from Ryobi and what's really, really impressive about it is the fact that it went from concept to production in just five months and that's a crazy fast amount of time for any kind of product, particularly a battery-powered lawnmower and considering how well they did with it. But they did leave some room for improvement. So starting from the top, we still have the Smart Trek self-propelled system with the thumb bars here. Now, I'm not a huge fan of thumb bars, but a lot of people are totally okay. One thing I love about what they did was they made this adjustable. So if you don't like the angle here, just pull this knob back, adjust it to the angle you like, find where it's comfortable, and go from there. Lots of room for adjustment. Love that they did that. They also stiffened up the speed selector a little bit. And that was a little bit of point, pain point, because when you make turns, sometimes you bump it a little bit. You just don't want to jack your speed every time you make a turn. The push button start is still here. Presence bar is pretty much a bar now instead of the pull in indicator that it had before. Here's where things took a turn that we didn't realize was going to happen. And that's with the all wheel drive. We knew all wheel drive was coming. We didn't realize it was going to be selectable between all wheel drive and rear wheel. So, when you're on flat lawn and you can get away with just the rear wheel, go ahead and use that mode and extend your runtime a little bit. But when you want to do the slopes on hills, switch over to all wheel drive, get the advantage of four wheel drive, and notice that the mower is going to slow down a little bit in that mode compared to rear wheel. We don't mind that so much because, hey, we're on a slope. We're going to be going slower anyway. Ryobi left the handle release alone. It's really, really easy. So when you're going for vertical storage, just pull up, handle moves over, flip it up. It'll also work if you push down. So whatever you prefer, there are two different handle heights here that you can work with. And notice we still have these nice rigid bars that are keeping it really stable for us. Now one other major change that they made is we no longer have a separate mulch plug to deal with. We now have a lever that helps us do this. So you're going to pull up right here and then slide over to bagging or if you're moving the other direction, slide from bagging to mulching. Now, we did notice that there is a little bit of stickiness in here. So, be aware of that, but once you get used to it, no big deal. We like that they put everything right here instead of making us keep track of a separate mulching plug. Now, one of the other things that we love Ryobi added is a fuel gauge right back here so you can see it while you're mowing. You don't have to worry about opening up the door to check the batteries individually. So, the compartment itself hasn't changed much. We still have two active battery ports that go in here and it is manual switching. So once one runs out, you do have to take a key and flip it around to the other way in order to get the second battery going. That's really the only thing that we saw that we'd like to see in the next version is just automatic switch over next time. One other thing I want to point out is that this is part of Ryobi's Whisper series, and that's a series of battery-powered lawn care that's even quieter than most. Now, we ran out and tested this against the original Crosscut. We got 71 decibels just running at no load out here, so that's just the motor and the core of the blade itself. The other one, 82 decibels. So the Whisper series is actually 11 decibels quieter, and that's massive. If you're wondering what this whole Ryobi Crosscut thing is about, Crosscut is what's going on right here. It's a two blade stacked system that allows for one high cut before a lower cut. It gives you much more even cutting. It gives you much better mulching. And with the power that this mower has, it's acting much more like a gas mower. In fact, this is the same kind of system that Honda uses on their higher end gas mowers. Now, Ryobi did such a good job on their original crosscut mower. There's some things that didn't change and we don't mind at all. For one thing, the power level, pretty much the same. Really, really impressive. It's turning that stack blade system easily, but then there's the cut quality. And in particular, the bagging is really, really efficient. The mulching gets finer clippings than we're used to seeing from a battery powered mower. But then there's the side discharge. Now we know not everybody side discharges, but this mower does a better job of distributing that grass like a gas mower than any other battery powered mower we've seen before. And that's translated all over to the all wheel drive version as well. When it comes to runtime, Ryobi says that you can get up to 70 minutes and up to three quarters of an acre using the two six amp hour batteries that are in the kit. Now we tested an R lawn that's got a combination of Bahia and San Augustine grass, and we were looking at a medium maintenance cut, and we ran for 59 minutes and one second. So based on that, in optimal conditions on a dry light cut, we think that three quarters of an acre is achievable. You can still get the original self-propelled cross cut at Home Depot for $5.99 as a kit. The new one is going to run $7.99, and that comes with two six amp hour batteries plus all the upgrades that we talked about. If you have any questions about this mower or the original, feel free to drop those in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.